Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Green Tech Today is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. I'm Becky Worley, and this is the Twit Network's Top 25 Green Tech Innovator Series. This episode of Twit's Top 25 Green Tech Innovators is brought to you by the Eco Imagination Challenge from GE. GE and its partners are awarding $200 million to ideas that help build the next generation power grid for the 21st century. For more information and to view and comment on ideas, go to ecomagination.com slash challenge. It's also brought to you by squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to publish a high quality website or blog. When you drive around Denmark, it feels like you're being followed by windmills. That's because the Danes produce almost a fifth of their energy with wind, and they have years of government incentives and guaranteed pricing to support their wind initiative. In this episode of Green Tech Today, we'll introduce you to a farmer who is harnessing wind on his land to supplement his dairy. We'll meet an electrician who's created an off-the-grid wind system for his home and for his car, so he's totally self-sufficient. And we'll see how investments in wind cooperatives are driving the Danish wind economy. While wind may not be the only solution for energy independence, in Denmark, it's part of a long-running program to reduce fossil fuel dependence. We start our journey with Rune Burke Nelson from the Danish Wind Energy Association. My producer Brad Marshland did this interview before I got to Denmark, and he started by asking how the country got started on their green energy wind initiative. I think it started back in 1973 when we had the, uh, the first oil crisis. Then a couple of uh, very ambitious blacksmiths uh, in the west of Denmark start to think about how we could uh, become independent, uh, uh, unindependent on, on fossil fuel. And uh, then they decided to develop the, a turbine. Later in the, in the 80s, uh, they start commercializing the, uh, the three-bladed uh, turbine, which we know today. And um, since then, the Denmark has more or less be, uh, become the, the world leader in, in wind energy. Well, the government here in Denmark has uh, pretty much uh, two roles, two major roles here in Denmark. First of all, they need to set the long-term planning on how much wind power needs to be uh, erected uh, in the specific municipalities here in, in Denmark. And second of all, they're setting the, the bar on the, on the subsidy in which the uh, investors get uh, investing in, in wind power. I think you need to see an, an investment in, in a wind turbine as a long-term investment. And uh, in order for the uh, investors to get their investment back, they need some sort of a, a fee to be, to be sure. The investors here in Denmark get the, the subsidy in the first 22,000 uh, full load hours that the turbine uh, are producing. And uh, that's about seven to eight years, but a, an average turbine would uh, last about 20 to 25 years. So I think it's, a, it's an investment that will, uh, that, will bring, uh, that will be paid off. In terms of integrating uh, wind power in the electricity consumption, Denmark is the world leader. In the second and third place is uh, Spain and, uh, and Great Britain with seven and nine percent. And I believe that the US ha has about one uh, percent uh, like China. Yeah, I think that we have had some uh, some bold politicians that uh, that uh, has said that uh, this is what we want to do. We really want to be uh, uh, independent. And um, also, the the Danish politician has uh, seen that uh, it is a rather good investment uh, when it comes to creating jobs and, uh, and creating a, a large export industry. So I think it's um, this has uh, been done due to a political. Uh, thinking. Well, here in, in Denmark we are familiar with the uh, not in my backyard aspect, but uh, also the, the Danes, um, 90 to 95 percent of all the Danes are pro wind and they like to see an expansion in the number of turbines erected. So, despite the, the NIMBY uh, aspect, I think that the, the Danes have, have seen that the, we need to, to do something and we need, um, for instance, turbines uh, in order to, uh, to cut our pollution. 
think you need to see the uh, the, the the wind turbine not only as a solution to to climate change, but also an opportunity to uh, create a green economy when it comes to creating jobs and uh, creating an uh, an industry with uh, uh, a lot of export. So. I think that, that wind power and creating a, a wind industry is, uh, is good for at least three things. The, the job and the export and, of course, the climate. We're partnering with uh, four of the, the biggest uh, venture capital firms in the clean energy space, three in the U.S., one in Europe. Uh, you know, again, we think that the combination of GE investment and venture capital investment is going to allow us to increase innovation. It's going to allow us to accelerate new ideas. It puts us shoulder to shoulder with some of the smartest tech investors. And we can use the, what I would call the industrial clout of GE to bring technologies to this marketplace faster. GE announced its challenge at a San Francisco event along with its four venture capital partners. Emerald Technology Ventures, Foundation Capital, Kleiner Perkins Caulfield & Byers, and Rockport Capital Partners have all joined with GE. Ideas from companies and individuals can be entered through the Ecoimagination.com website for the next 10 weeks. So check out Ecoimagination.com. The island of Samso won a contest that the Danish government set forth. Which community could create the best plan to wean itself from fossil fuels? This tiny island, roughly the size of Nantucket, with a population of 4,000 people, now exports the excess energy it produces. Individuals like dairy farmer Jorgen Tranberg have turbines on their land and have also invested in an offshore wind cooperative of 10 turbines. What are you doing here with energy? I have uh, this wind turbine there, that's a uh, one megawatt wind turbine and she produces uh, 2.4 million kilowatt. And so I also have a uh, half wind turbines on the sea down there. And uh, that's a uh, 2.3 megawatt and they produce uh, 8 million kilowatts. So I sell uh, six and a half million kilowatt every year. How many homes does that wind turbine supply? So this one produces for nearly 500 families. Do you produce milk for that many people? Oh, yes, we produce uh, 4,000 4, liters every day. I have 150 uh, milking cows also. What does this turbine bring to your farm monetarily? How much money does it make each year? Oh, this, this uh, is uh, 2.4 million kilowatts. Uh, that's 0.43. That's one and uh, well, a little bit more than 1 million. And so the wind turbines in the sea, that's give them uh, Oh, I just give four million. That's one point six million. So that's two point six seven million crowns. Oh, this year paid uh, way fast back, seven years, eight years, I think. But the wind turbines on the sea they go eleven, twelve years. But the cost in service and and for three years ago I should uh, change the gearbox and that cost nearly one million Danish crowns. So that was early. <laughs> but so yes, it's a risk. Yes, that's a risk. And, and, and last week the wind turbines on the sea was then still in two days because there was uh, so much wind they could not go on ships. So that cost me 25,000 crowns for two days. But so is the life. How do you think of yourself? Are you primarily a farmer or an electricity producer? No, I'm quite sure a farmer. That's <laughs> normally in Denmark uh, where farmers have uh, wind turbines. and that, that's the uh, wind turbines stand on our land, and so why shall we not have the wind turbines? That's the same to take care of a wind turbines like a tractor or a car. Were you worried when you were deciding to put the turbine up? Did you have any concerns or fears? The wind turbines here, there was, uh, there was no problem because in that time we had a, a good uh, price on the electricity. But the wind turbines on the sea, that was much more difficult and that was much more risky because that could happen a lot of things, yes. When you think about the community here in Samso, what motivated you to get behind alternative energy, to decide to go for wind, to really work hard on this? That was quite uh, simple, that was na natural. We have a lot of straw in the fields and we don't know what to do with the straw, so why not uh, burn it and warm up houses? And we have a lot of good wind, why not put wind turbines up? Talk about the cooperative spirit here. I mean, it's you who owns the wind. 
So mm -hmm. if, if, if that was a company from Sweden or United States uh, belongs to wind turbines, I don't think they were so nice. But, see the different? But you, the Samsingers, you own the wind. Yes. And that makes a big difference. Yes, and we shall also look at them. And what do you think when you look at them? Oh, that's nice. Because it's going into your pocket. You ah, see <laughs> and uh, and uh, they produce a lot of le electricity, and we don't need to use uh, coal and oil. And you know, the oil is not enough. And there's some uh, people in the world that they have the oil, and that could be a problem. What would you advise to other governments to support wind power and alternative energy? We, we cannot produce electricity so uh, cheap than you can on oil and uh, nuclear power and everything. That's, uh, of course, we cannot do that. And individuals making this but that's, huge an investment that's, need help. There's a Danish uh, newspaper that are so angry on wind turbines and they say they cost so much, so much, so much. And so they send, tell us in the end of the, the papers that 600 crowns each family. 600 crowns each family for to get 20% of the energy from wind turbines. Is that a lot of money? That's not so bad. That's better to have wind turbines than send your son to Iraq for to get the oil, you see. I think that's better. Do you have to come out here with your toolbox and have a tinker? No, 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 no. Is there something wrong with the, the wind, wind turbine? The wind turbines, uh, she takes the, the, her telephone and calls the service company and tells them what's uh, wrong. And so they can go in the computer and see what's wrong. And so we have some clever guys on the island. They send them out and uh, see what's wrong. And so maybe they can fix it or maybe they can say, oh, that's this. And so they come next day and change it. There, there's something about farmers where you are so resourceful and you're using all the natural resources you have. but. Farmers are known for being frugal and frugal. Sc scaling back, um, not living extravagant lives. And so do you see that balance for you where you're, you're using all the resources you have, but you also live a simpler life so you don't take so much energy? No, we don't have a simpler life, no. No? No. I go also on holiday in the winter time in the warm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I, I have a, a small boat there and go with gas. <laughs> ah, <yeah. laughs> but that you would think that that is indulgent is so beautiful about you that you would say, oh, I have a boat and I go on vacation once a year. So yes, I'm using resources too. But that's in modern times, that's actually very reserved. And you're making more than you're taking. Does that yes. make you feel good? Yes. Yes. But I have a small boat. <laughs> <laughs> because I have not time to have a sailing boat, you see? That takes a lot of hours. And now then I have a little boat boat, then we have two, three hours in the evening we can go, you see? <laughs> if, if we have a sailing boat, I must have the whole day. But I must take care of my cows also, so that's better with a boat. <laughs> I, I'm personally giving you um, the okay to have your boat, so okay. It's, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs>to take a break from Green Tech today to thank our sponsor, Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to publish a high quality website or blog. Uh, here's the thing about Squarespace. It's easy to use. The UI is simple for creating and managing a website. It's optimized for both beginners and for CSS experts. I was just talking to some of my colleagues over at ABC News Radio, and they've decided to use Squarespace for their site. Uh, there are hundreds of design templates to choose from, and that's what makes it so simple if you're a beginner. They've got lots of different modules, like the blog module. It lets you import and, importantly, export uh, to or from WordPress, Blogger, TypePad. They've got form builders. They've got a Flickr photo display module. They've got a Twitter widget. You can put Google Maps on your site. And I know for a lot of people, metrics are very important. They have website tracking, um, and it's built in. Uh, for SEO, for search engine optimization, and that is very important. There's also an iPhone app that lets you log into your website and update it on the go. Uh, use Squarespace for all your website needs. Really, you can, you can build a site, host it, and update it anytime. For a free trial, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code GREENTECH. We thank them for their support.
So far, we've seen that government involvement, investment, and the business of alternative wind energy are at work in Denmark. But individuals have also gotten into the game, like this electrician, a man with the DIY spirit who's made the decision to take his home off the grid, primarily to save money. This is Brian Kerr. He's an electrician here in Samso, and I've come here to see what kind of a setup you have for alternative energy at your home. Um, walk me through it, starting with the big turbine. Yeah, this is the, the turbine I've put up uh, two years ago. Uh, I have uh, solar panels over here on my house. They, uh, I, have my, I get my hot water from it all summer. Uh, I also have a pellet burner inside my shop, or works tool shop. Uh, which I use when there isn't any wind. And that's for heating? That's for my heating, yes. I have solar panels on the top of my house, and I don't do any maintenance on them. Uh, if something went wrong, I would call somebody. You're an electrician, and you have this incredible setup of inner working um, systems. Can anybody do this, or do you have to be really involved? I think if you wanted some a setup like this, you probably would be an electrician. This is somewhat expensive and has costed me a lot of hours after work and in weekends to, to set up. But you could do with a lot less than this. A small turbine uh, isn't that expensive to, to put up and it's actually, uh, the smaller turbines, it's much easier to maintain. This is an old, this is 20 year old technology we have here, so there's a, a, a bit more to, to maintain than just, uh, just putting it up. So you could have a piece by piece systems. You could have just the hot water solar heater. You could have just the pellet stove. You could have just the turbine. Maybe the turbine's pretty involved, but I mean, you could have some of these smaller pieces and it wouldn't be a ton of maintenance. No, I don't have uh, that much maintenance on my solar panels. I only check up uh, the, the water, if there's enough water on the, the panels each year. Uh, and then when the, the sun is shining, I'm going out to see if the, the pump is running to, to get the water from the, the panels and into my house. But if you have the do-it-yourself spirit, this is doable. This is doable. This is, uh, I've done it in my spare time. I have a full-time job uh, beside this. I, I have uh, a small company with eight employees. So this is, this is my spare time. What does your wife say about the whole system? Does she, does she have any complaints or annoyances? Does it change her lifestyle? Uh, she hopes I'm never dying. <laughs> <laughs> she will never know what, <laughs> how it's working. But uh, yes, it's, it's a, uh, the, the turbine actually um, when we, did, we didn't have the turbine, we didn't uh, speculate in when the wind was blowing and, and uh, when there was sun and, and so on. But now she is looking out the window to see if the turbine is, is running to, to see, then she saves uh, money. This is, our, this is our own power, then we, we, don't, we only pay the tax from, from this. We don't uh, pay, uh, we only pay what, around one third. So it positively impacts the budget, but does it negatively impact your lifestyle? No, uh, we don't. We don't speculate it over it in uh, in our everyday lives. We live a uh, fairly normal life. And just as you would if you were just pulling power off the grid. Yeah, I would say so. So this is your tool shed. Yeah, you can you can tell it. I have my my tools here. Yes. What's that? That's the turbine controller. Um, it switches on when there's wind and controls the turbine pretty much. And then this looks this like... Is, this the is the, actually the nose cone. I haven't got around to, to put it on yet because I've been tightening the bolts. So the turbine needs to, to settle for about a year and then you fasten it and then this is put on. I'm just going to put it out this, next week perhaps. So like every guy with his do-it-yourself projects, it's a work in progress. Yeah, everything here is uh, <laughs> just a work in progress, okay. yes. Now explain this to me. This, I don't quite get it. A, a big water? Yeah, it's a big, uh, actually a big water boiler. Uh, when the, there's um, enough wind, uh, we start to, to boil water in this tank because then we can store the energy from the turbine for up to about four to five days. So actually four to five days afterwards, it has been blowing 
I still have uh, hot water from my central heating and, and from my house. Okay, this is different to me because my understanding is that all the electricity from your windmill goes to the grid. Yeah, pretty much. It, it goes that way. It, it flows in the direction of the grid. <laughs> Actually, it needs to go through my house and my house uses before it goes out to into the grid. So it's just the excess products. So uh, the most economical for me will be to use all the energy myself, but I can't, so I'll have to store most, uh, mo most possible in here. So the, the extra energy goes to some sort of a burner that this, heats the this, water? Uh, yeah, there's actually, uh, I have four heating elements in here. The, these is, is actually a nine kilowatt uh, heating element, and also these two here. So I have actually around 39 uh, times four uh, heating elements here. Mm. So I can store about 550 kilowatt hours in hot water. So I can use it over about five days. So the hot water is then used in your home, used for heating, or does it actually come back into electricity? No, I can't, I can't convert it back. <laughs> that, that would be really <laughs> nice to store really it like, <laughs> like a battery, but uh, this is just for, for my house. So I, instead of uh, burning wood pellets and uh, electricity, I store it in, into hot water and then I, have to s uh, I can save this for another day. So this is true CO2 neutral heating? Yeah. Which Actually, this, is, I, it, this flows directly from the turbine and into these heating elements. Now, this is unique because um, most people aren't electricians, so they can't, in their do-it-yourself project, wire their home alternative energy through their inverter converter and then send it out afterwards, right? Uh, no, this is a, a bit, big lar a bit uh, larger turbine that I have. But you can buy small turbines to, to put up with just a heating element like this in your se into, into your own central heating. And when the wind is blowing, you can the, the hot water will come from this. Sweet ride. Yeah, this is my wife's car. <laughs> <laughs> and this is all electric. This is all electric. It has uh, batteries for capable for driving about 60 to 70 kilometers. Do you want to go for a ride? I would love to. Okay, let's go. Hmm. L jet. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> it's so quiet. Yeah, there isn't, isn't much, much noise. Actually, we are sitting almost on top of the, the motor. Huh. The turbine only made five mm. uh, of these types here. Mm. Uh, and this is grid connected. Mm. So, but I've, we've al I've also made a control for a few others like, like mine. Mm. Actually, al also in, in Jutland, I've made a, a few big ones also. Hey, thanks for watching. If you have any comments on the show or anything for the Twit Network's Top 25 Green Tech Innovator Series, email us, greentechtoday at twit.tv.